native. Hello, everybody. I hope you can see this video. So in the morning of this past Christmas, my entire family woke up to this funny but shocking video you're seeing here. We saw rain falling during this supposed hammer time period. And I thought of you guys and immediately I took my phone and videoed it so that you would believe me when I'm talking about it. In the next 10 minutes, I'll be taking you through a journey. We'll go from the past through the present and to the future. In the about eight to nine seconds, it took me to walk from my seat to this stage. Something sad, shocking, and somewhat insightful has happened. Who can guess? Okay, let me help you. In the about eight to nine seconds, it took me to walk on this stage. Over 10,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide has been released into the atmosphere. I'm sure you didn't guess it right. But where did it come from? Who do we hold responsible? 10,000 looks like a large number, right? It looks like a number we should attribute to those large oil companies who drill and explore oil every passing day, the ones who burn and flare gases. And then we go to our houses and mourn and accuse them of killing us. But have you ever asked yourself, what percentage of that 10,000 comes from me? I need you to stay with me because I'm about to expose you to something that I call a life-changing truth. What percentage comes from your daily journey to and from work as our vehicles emit gases that war against the clean air? What percentage comes from the hour you spend in the shower? Oh no, you didn't know that showers use 2.5 gallons of water per minute and each gallon of water uses 3 ounces of carbon dioxide. What percentage comes from the plastic bottles, packets and bags we drop by the wayside waiting for a non-existing Samaritan to come pick it up for you? Yes, you. What percentage comes from the meat you eat? Yes, the meat you eat. The houses we build and the light we get by running diesel power generators. What percentage comes from our nonchalance towards nature as we trample upon trees and forests? to build houses, to build our churches, to build schools, to build industries that cause even more harm to this climate. I need you to still stay with me because I'm still exposing you to life-changing truths. We just concluded Christmas and a lot of us here almost destroyed our year-long body goals by eating chicken and meat. Yes, yes, we did. Thank you. But little did you know that the production of beef and the rearing of livestock contributes tremendously to greenhouse emissions. Did you know that? To the extent that government's climate advisors in advanced economies are pleading with people like me and you to stop eating meat so as to help protect the environment. But how many of us are willing to take that decision for the environment? Stop eating your meat to protect the environment. <laughs> well, in your seats right now, I'm sure you have calculated the percentage you are each responsible for.
if you have. I'm sure you are now more aware of the individual harm you are causing to this environment. I'm sure that right now you're less likely to point accusing fingers to any oil company because you know your carbon footprint to an extent and you know the depletion it's causing to our environment. It's time we wake up to the fact that there is just one thing that is commonly shared by all of us in this room. I'll ask again, who knows that one thing? What is that one thing that connects everybody in this room? I'll help you again. Well, it's not our race, it's not our gender, it's not our age, it's not our caliber of education. It's certainly not our account balances, because I can almost tell that by looking at people. But, but <laughs> no offense, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. But then, it's our planet. Everybody shares the same planet. That is something that connects everybody on planet Earth. But then this same planet that was built to connect the black and the white, the male and the female, the rich and the poor, this same planet that is meant to be an asset to all of us is gradually becoming a liability as we engage in more climate harmful practices by the day. Today we live in a world of choking weather, costing us big time. And you know, this cost goes beyond massive damage control bills we spend. These costs ripple through our lives, costing us some other toxic ways. Small businesses in Lagos Island lose their businesses, their customers, and their entire merchandise to flooding. How much loss is this to our economy? Now, this is beyond the money. These costs make us pay in lives. Sometimes we pay in pain, in damage, and in suffering. A body making us pay in currency, in lifestyle, in jobs, and in every way imagined. How long are we going to continue to use our hands to destroy this same planet that was built to serve us? If you're climate savvy, you remember a famous kit of a dinosaur that came from a million years ago, from a million years ago to address the United Nations. His name is Frankie. How many, who has listened to that before? Exactly. In the exact words of Frankie the dinosaur, it's time for us to stop making excuses and start making changes. It's time we save ourselves before it's too late. Because more deadly than the COVID-19 pandemic is another pandemic we might not be able to recover from come 10, 20, 30 years from now. And so it's funny how our government uses billions of dollars to subsidize fossil fuels. It's funny, but it's this it's almost the same as subsidizing the price of the exact bullet that can kill you. It's almost the same as subsidizing a rock or an asteroid that can come into Earth and clear every life. And so as a young girl today, I'm looking into 2050, and I'm envisioning the kind of conversations I'll be having with my children and grandchildren. Are we going to be talking about their weddings or us going for picnics and enjoying the environment? Or would we be locked up inside, wailing at how toxic the atmosphere has become? Because some individuals in 2022, me and you, refused to take action for the environment. Would we be so tormented by the black suit and would this air that we all long for today turn to our own poison? Would our seas be so toxic that it cannot even retain any life? 
I'm sure most of us fish lovers by then will not be able to satisfy our cravings anymore. So I urge every one of us today to please take a decision for the climate. You see, there exist other options to almost any other thing in life, but there is no planet B. We just have Earth, and we have to do everything possible to maximize this, pro this planet. As scary as it seems, this future that I've painted to all of you right now is very real and attainable. Very real. The only thing we need to do to see it come to pass is to ignore the voices of climate activists like myself. And so if you're unsure of how you can join this revolution, you can join us at the Green Entrepreneurs. We're basically people like me and you who still want to do business, who still want to solve problems, but not at the expense or the cost of the climate. I'll leave you with this. This climate crisis is a race. It's a race. I can even call it a deadly race. But it's a race we can win. And a race we must win if we want to survive. And so I urge all of you to please take a decision for the climate today. If you're not going to do it for me, or the person seated beside you, please do it for our grandchildren who would inherit this planet from us. Thank you.